At this time, we have ceremonial manners and, and presentation, and it is my honor uh, to call, um, I'm gonna take a little things out of, out of order, and uh, actually it's under oral communication, and as you know, Cupertino is very famous for um, Apple Computer, and we're very honored to have Mr. Steve Jobs to uh, come here tonight to give a special uh, presentation. Mr. Jobs? Welcome, Mr. Jobs. This looks like you have a fan club here. Thanks, yeah. Thank you. Um, I was... Apple's grown like a weed. And as you know, we've always been in Cupertino. Started in a little office park and eventually got the buildings we are in now at the corner of De Anza and 280. But we've, uh, and those buildings hold maybe 2,600 people, 2,800 people. Uh, but we've got almost 12,000 people in, in the area. So we're renting buildings, not very good buildings either, at an, <laughs> at an ever greater uh, radius from our campus. And we're putting people in those. And it's clear that we need to build a new campus. So we're just out of space. And that doesn't mean we don't need the one we've got. We do need it. But we need another one to augment it. Um, and so we've got a plan that lets us stay in Cupertino. Uh, and we went out and we bought some land. And this land is kind of special to me. I, uh, when I was 13, I think, I called up uh, Hewlett and Packard were my idols. And I called up Bill Hewlett, because he lived in Palo Alto, and there were no unlisted numbers in the phone book, which gives you a clue to my age. <laughs> <laughs> and he picked up the phone, and I talked to him, and I asked him if he'd give me some spare parts for something I was building called a frequency counter. And he did, but in addition to that, he gave me something way more important. He gave me a job that summer, a summer job at Hewlett Packard, uh, right here on, uh, in Santa Clara off 280, the division that built frequency counters. And I was in heaven. Well, right around that exact moment in time, uh, Hewlett and Packard themselves were walking on some property over here in Cupertino, in Prune Ridge, and they ended up buying it. Uh, and they built their computer systems division there. And uh, as Hewlett Packard has been shrinking lately, they decided to sell that property and we bought it. Uh, we bought that and we bought some adjacent property. It all used to be apricot trees, uh, apricot orchards, and we've got about 150 acres. And we would like to put a new campus on that so that we can stay in Cupertino. And we've come up, we've hired some great architects to work with some of the best in the world, I think. Um, and we've come up with a, a design that puts 12,000 people in one building. <laughs> I mean, think about that, that's rather odd. 12,000 people in a building, in one building. But we've seen these, these office parks with lots of buildings and they get pretty boring pretty fast. So we'd like to do something better than that and I'd like to take you through what we'd like to do. Um, so, this is supposed to work here. There we go. Uh, can you see this? Yep. Yes, we can. Great. So, here's where we are today, which is uh, on Infinite Loop Drive, again at the intersection of De Anza and 280. Mr. Jobs, you can actually draw on the screen. That's how high-tech we are. Oh, good. You use your <laughs> finger. <laughs> so instead of pointing in the air, you can just draw. I, I don't really need to draw on the screen. It's okay. You can see it clearly. Uh, <laughs> And what we've done is we've bought this land right here. We tried to buy the apartments in the corner, but they're not for sale, so we couldn't buy those. Uh, but we bought everything else. And the campus we'd like to build there is one building that holds 12,000 people. And, and uh, it's, it's a pretty amazing building. Let me show it to you. 
It's a little like a spaceship landed. <laughs> but there it is. And it's got this gorgeous courtyard in the middle, uh, but a lot more. So let's, let's take a closer look at it. Um, it's got curve, it's, 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 a, it's a circle. And so it's curved all the way around. As you know, if you build things, this is not the cheapest way to build something. There's not a straight piece of glass on this building. It's all curved, and we've used our experience in making retail buildings uh, all over the world now. And we know how to make the biggest pieces of glass in the world for architectural use. And we want to make the glass specifically for this building here. We can make it curved like this all the way around the building. And you can see what it will look like. It's pretty cool. Um, again, today, uh, about 20% of the space is landscaping. Most of it is a big asphalt parking lot. Several big asphalt parking lots. So 20% of it is landscape. We want to completely change this. Uh, and we want to make 80% uh, of it landscape. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to put the, most of the parking underground um, so that we can have 80% uh, be landscaped. Um, and you can see what we have in mind. I mean, there's nothing like this on the property now. It's, it's pretty bad. Today, there are 3,700 trees on the property. We'd like to just to, you know, almost double that. We've hired. Uh, one of the senior arborists from Stanford, actually, who's very good with indigenous trees around this area. So we'd like to plant a lot of trees, including some apricot orchards. And again, you can see what it might be like. And this is some of the infrastructure. Um, the main building, we want, we have parking underneath the main building and but that's not enough, unfortunately, and we have a parking structure here as well. The, the building's four stories high, as is the parking structure, so uh, there's nothing high here at all. We want the whole place human scale. It's actually uh, um, about the same as what we have in, in Cupertino right now. And uh, an energy center, we deal with uh, people using, sitting at computers all day writing software. And if the power goes out on the grid, we get to send everybody home. So we have to have backup power to power the place in the event of brownouts and stuff. And I think what we're going to end up doing is um, making the energy center our primary source of power, because we can generate power with natural gas and other ways that can be cleaner and cheaper, and use the grid as our backup. Um, and we think that makes more sense. Uh, we've got an auditorium because we put on presentations much like we did yesterday, but we have to go to San Francisco to do them. And a fitness center and some R&D facilities. These are just things that where we do uh, testing and we need some buildings to test in. And there's hardly any people in them. Um, so this is roughly the kind of thing that we're thinking about. And. Uh, we're thinking about 12,000 people. I put 13 on the slide just because we may, may get a little luckier than 12,000. Uh, so we're, we're up roughly 40% in people versus what the site has been used for already. Um, and uh, we're increasing the space to 3.1 uh, million square feet, so 20% increase in space. The landscaping, though, in increases by uh, 350%, which is nice. Uh, the trees by 60%. The surface parking <coughs> goes down by 90%. And, uh, and so I think the, the overall feeling of the place is going to be a zillion times better than it is now with all the asphalt. And the building footprint uh, actually goes, goes down by 30%. So. We want to take the space and, in, in many cases, making it smaller, um, 
we're putting more of a desirable thing on the space. And um, that's what we'd like to do. So just want to give you a, a look at it. This is a cafe. Uh, we have cafes in our facilities. And this cafe will, uh, you know, feed the better part of uh, 3,000 people at a sitting. Because that's what you need when you have 12,000 people in a campus. And uh, so that's what we're looking at.